Please be seated. Good morning. <laughs> My name is Peter Ahn, and I am the proud dean of the School of General Studies. Welcome to the Class Day Ceremony, celebrating the accomplishments of the General Studies 70th Anniversary Class of 2017. Yes. <laughs> I'm especially pleased that President Lee Bollinger, Provost John Coatsworth, Executive Vice President David Madigan, Dean of Columbia College, James Valentini, and University Chaplain Janelle Davis are here to share in our celebration. In, a, <clears throat> in addition, we are honored to have with us today Professor Cornelia Vol, Provost of the Institut d'études politiques de Paris, known more commonly as Sciences Po. <laughs> Sciences Po is the leading European university specializing in the social sciences. We are also honored to welcome Vice President Horace Ip and his colleagues from the City University of Hong Kong. And a warm welcome to Mr. Thomas Michelon and Ms. Sandrine Claude Guerin from the French Embassy in Washington. They and their colleagues have joined us this morning to celebrate the graduation of students in our dual BA program with Sciences Po and our joint BA program with the City University of Hong Kong. All of these students have earned two bachelor's degrees in four years, one from Sciences Po or City U, and one from Columbia. I would like to extend a special welcome to our class day speaker, Ms. Julia Bacha, GS class of 2003. <laughs> Finally, welcome to members of the executive board of the GS Alumni Association. The creation of GS 70 years ago represents a milestone in the evolution of undergraduate education at Ivy League universities. There are two major factors that make GS unique. First, we actively recruit students who have taken an untraditional path and mainstream them fully into a traditional and rigorous undergraduate program. Second, we are the incubator for innovative dual and joint BA programs that offer students a unique opportunity to engage with cutting edge international education. Our flagship joint program with List College of the Jewish Theological Seminary was established over 60 years ago. 25 joint program students will graduate this week. We are especially pleased that 61 students will be graduating from our dual BA program with Sciences Po and 11 students from our joint BA program with the City University of Hong Kong. The, the presence in the classroom of both traditional and untraditional students enhances significantly the quality of the intellectual discourse among students and faculty and makes the Columbia undergraduate experience unlike that at any other Ivy League university. There's absolutely no doubt that the success of GS is due to the commitment of the Columbia faculty to our mission and our students. 
At GS, you will find over 460 veterans of the US military. <laughs> 102 of whom will be graduating this week. The largest cohort of vet US veterans the largest cohort of U.S. veterans to graduate from Columbia since World War II. No other Ivy League. <laughs> no other Ivy League or selective private university comes even close to that number. We are, without doubt, the gold standard for undergraduate veterans education in the United States. Whether GS students are veterans, dancers, entrepreneurs, firefighters, or professional chefs like Chef Jacques Pepin, class of 1970, who will be receiving an honorary degree at Wednesday's commencement ceremony, whether our students are Wall Street bankers or tech innovators, whether they are working parents, professional models, or survivors of medical or personal traumas, whether they are international students or new Americans, they receive the same superb education as all other Columbia graduates, and they excel. Members of the class of 2017, you represent the cutting edge of American and international undergraduate education. And you have proven yourselves through your academic accomplishments and your dedication to one another and Columbia. We are privileged to count you lifelong members of the Columbia intellectual and alumni communities. Since he assumed the presidency of Columbia in 2002, Lee Bollinger has articulated a dynamic vision for the future of this great university. In the past 15 years, President Bollinger has spearheaded Columbia's expansion into Manhattanville in West Harlem. The breadth of President Bollinger's intellectual vision is, is exemplified in the first two buildings that have recently opened in Manhattanville. The Jerome L. Green Mind Brain Behavior Science Center, which will house the Zuckerman Institute, and the Lenfest Center for the Arts. President Bollinger has also moved Columbia into the forefront of international universities with the establishment of Columbia Global Centers in nine major cities around the world. Most recently, he announced the creation of a new institution embedded in the university called Columbia World Projects. In describing this effort, President Bollinger writes, what universities have not yet done is create institutions that aim across a broad range of specific topics to connect academic work and the broad capacities of the academic community with organizations and parties beyond the academy that possess the power and influence to transform all this into concrete consequences benefiting humanity. This is the purpose of Columbia World Projects. Lee Bollinger is also a committed educator, continuing to teach an undergraduate course on the First Amendment, even while he leads this great university. It is my privilege to introduce the 19th president of Columbia University, Lee C. Bollinger.
Thank you, Peter. I want to extend my warmest congratulations to you, the class of 2017, and to your parents and families and friends. And since I will be speaking to you at the university commencement ceremony on Wednesday, I want to be extremely brief this morning. There are really only two things that I want and need to say. The first is about you and general studies. It is common to refer to general studies as the place within the university that affords access to people of uncommon talent who have led lives that depart to some extent from the norm, and so we refer to you often as non-traditional students. I can't tell you how deeply proud I am of general studies and of you and your predecessors. It is, as Peter said, <clears throat> Peter said, unique in higher education in America. And it recognizes that brilliance flourishes in different ways and at different times in human lives. You represent the best of that belief. I have found in life I have found in life that it is often the case that the ways we are characterized by others as we make our life choices continues to define how we actually think about ourselves. You may or may not think of yourself as a non-traditional student, but I would recommend that you consider it a very, very positive description and keep it in mind as you continue on with your lives. When you face a hard or important decision in the years ahead, as you no doubt will, it may be helpful to frame your answer in terms of what a person leading a non-traditional life would choose. Too often, I'm afraid, we move through life more or less as we are told or expected to do. You, therefore, are very fortunate to already be viewed as individuals who are not in the standard mold. In my view, that is something to treasure. The second thing The second and last thing I want to raise is your Dean, Peter Ahn. Stay down, stay down. So we're going to do this twice. <laughs> this is Peter's last graduation ceremony as Dean of General Studies. For two decades, he has led, but more importantly, created this extraordinary institution. Personally, I can testify to his having had profound influence on the development of general studies and the university. Truly profound. But what defines Peter as dean is his utter devotion, his love, really, of you, the students of general studies. I urge you to let him know in every way you might think of how grateful you are. It will mean the world to him. Congratulations, Peter.
Congratulations, and I'll see you on Wednesday. Thank you. Thank you, Lee, and thank you to my fellow graduates of the class of 2017. <laughs> Our class day speaker this morning is the distinguished documentary filmmaker and writer Julia Bacha, GS class of 2003. Originally from Brazil, Julia came to New York to study English, eventually matriculating at GS where she pursued a degree in Middle East history. Julia graduated in 2003, magna cum laude, phi beta kappa, and as a member of the GS Honor Society. Julia has used documentary film and multimedia to foster constructive worldwide conversations on some of the most divisive issues of our times, especially the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. She began her filmmaking career in Cairo, where she wrote and edited Control Room, for which she was nominated to the Writers Guild of America Award. In Jerusalem, she co-directed In Counterpoint, which won Best Documentary Prize at the San Francisco Film Festival. She then directed, produced, and wrote the screenplay for Budrus, which was awarded the Rittenauer Documentary Film Prize. She most recently directed and produced My Neighborhood, which won a Peabody Award. She is currently working on a Sundance-supported film for which she received a 2015 Guggenheim Fellowship. In a in addition to over 20 film festival awards, Julia is the recipient of the King Hussein Leadership Prize, Search for Common Ground Award, and the Puma Creative Impact Award. She is a member of the Council on Foreign Relations, a young global leader at the World Economic Forum, and a regular TED speaker. Julia lives in Manhattan with her husband, Lucas Welch, and their two amazing children. At commencement on Wednesday, Julia Bacha will be awarded the 2017 University Medal for Excellence. The Medal for Excellence is awarded to an alumna or alumnus from any school of the university who is under 45 years of age and who possesses an outstanding record in scholarship, public service, and or professional life. Please join me in congratulating Julia Bacha on her award and welcome her as our class day speaker. Wow. Thank you, President Bollinger, Dean Ahn, Provost Coatsworth, members of the faculty and administration, proud parents and family members, the thrilled and terrified graduating class of 2017. Congratulations. It's incredibly humbling to be here with you today. It's been 14 years since my own graduation, and I owe so much to this school. It's safe to say that my professional and personal life would look completely different if the School of General Studies did not exist. I was born and raised in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. <laughs> Some Brazilians out there. <laughs> and when I was 17, I came to New York to learn how to speak English for one year before returning to Brazil to the law school in which I was enrolled. For context, in Brazil, law school is an undergraduate degree. When Brazilian kids are 16, they have to decide if they're gonna become lawyers, actresses, doctors, or engineers. There's no four years 
of liberal arts education. So while I was taking English classes here in this campus, I had a wonderful professor, Shelley Saltzman, who one day, seeing how enthusiastic I was about the history classes I was auditing on campus at the time, she looked at me and said, why don't you apply to study here? And I thought that was a crazy idea. I was just beginning to be able to follow a big academic book in English, and I didn't have any of the standardized tests that were generally required. But I was in love with the idea of a liberal arts education. I wanted to explore. I wanted to learn philosophy, astronomy, calculus, and Persian before I decided what I would do for a living. And so thanks to the incredible support of the faculty and professors at GS and beyond on this campus, as well as my parents and my step-parents, I was able to fulfill my dream. About two years into my studies at GS, two planes flew into the World Trade Center towers, killing thousands of people. My mother called from Rio, urging me to go back to Brazil. But it was too late. New York was already my new home, and I became determined to understand why that had happened and what we could do to avoid more suffering in the future. Those questions were still very much inside me in 2003 when I sat where you're all sitting there today. It was going to be a few months before my first trip to the Middle East. That trip set in motion my career as a filmmaker, a career that has until now been exclusively focused on that region of the world. In a way, I've spent the past 14 years searching for answers to September 11. I unfortunately don't have the answers, but I have come to understand one key component to a saner world, and that has to do with the power of your individual attention. It's possible that much of what I'm going to say might sound simple, perhaps even painfully obvious. But like many of the most obvious things in life, it can be easy to take them for granted and forget at key moments the profound consequences that they carry. And I'm afraid that's exactly what we've been doing to great harm to ourselves. So what's so profound about attention? First of all, we all seek it. At any point in time, there are competition for your individual attention. Every year, billions of dollars are spent by multinational companies, social causes, and new apps, all seeking to capture it. It's been that way for a very long time, but the internet age has made the attention economy dramatically more competitive and has highlighted how directly our attention can impact the shape the world is taking around us. In English, we say pay attention, implying we're recognizing that attention is a currency, valuable and finite. But what we sometimes fail to remember is that this currency is one of the most powerful forces shaping the world today. How does that work? I'll start with a small example. My son Kai, he will be two years old in a couple of months. For me, one of the hardest parts of parenting has been trying to reinforce his good behavior by showering him with attention when he's happy, giggly, and warm. Unfortunately, that's no easy task. I work full time, and we have two kids. In addition to Kai, my husband and I also have a four-year-old daughter named Mila. Time is precious, so when Kai is content and playing quietly, I try to squeeze in something that I've been meaning to do, like paying a bill or cleaning the dishes or putting away the toys, not exactly reinforcing his good behavior. But when he's cranky, there's nothing more that I want than to have him stop whining, so I will drop anything and pay attention to him. 
And there, childhood psychologists will tell you, lies a great danger. You are teaching your child that tantrums are successful ways to capture mommy's attention. Now, the same, theme, the same thing happens with us adults. We've come to embrace tantrums as functional behavior. In fact, if we look closely, we'll see how entire communities and countries are constantly learning the most efficient ways to get the world's attention. As a society, the most direct way to observe what we are collectively paying attention to is through media coverage. What's on the front page of the New York Times today? What's on CNN tonight? What's trending on Twitter right now? What was on top of our Facebook feed this morning? Sadly, pretty consistently, the answer to this question is violence, bigotry, and fear. Just like I pay too much attention to Kai's tantrums, so do too we collectively pay too much attention to the world's negative behaviors. It's not that we don't care about the quiet acts or the moments of cooperation. We're just not trained to see them. It's very unusual to see stories of nonviolent resistance and cooperation on the front pages of our newspapers or trending on social media. The message we are collectively sending is clear. If you need to grab our attention, use violence. Day in and day out, we have been turning violence into a functional behavior and nonviolence into an ineffective mechanism for addressing our problems. I want to propose to the class of 2017 that we have a shared responsibility, an urgent one, to drive what the world pays attention to. Never before have the words of the Canadian philosopher Marshall McLuhan been so true. On spaceship Earth, there are no passengers. We are all crew. The content we choose to consume and pay attention drives and determines where we go. And it's time we took responsibility for it. Right now, too many of us are behaving as passengers. Let's take a cl closer look at what that looks like. Much of our lives are spent online. We read our news online. We watch movies online, we do our shopping online, we donate to causes online, and every single action we take is monitored in detailed fashion and put into algorithms that then determine what is produced and sold back to us. These algorithms are used to determine what stories we collectively tell about what life on Earth looks like today. The stories that set our agenda as a community, that determine what our priorities should be. The dynamic online is the same that plays out offline, but on steroids. And the solution in both of these settings is for us to be conscious about where we direct the most valuable currency our modern world has, our own individual attention. Choosing where we place our attention is one of the most political acts one can take in the world today. The godfathers of nonviolence knew that well. When Gandhi arrived in India from South Africa, he immediately set up two newspapers. He knew that in order to get people to join his nonviolent actions, he would have to show his community that actions such as the Salt March would attract public attention. And what a better way to do that than to establish your own newspapers. The leaders of the civil rights movement also knew the power of attention. As Martin Luther King put it, we have to dramatize nonviolent actions so that the cause can no longer be ignored. Many of the civil rights activities, such as the Montgomery bus boycott led by Rosa Parks, were carefully planned to maximize media coverage. I have personally witnessed the dynamic between public attention and nonviolence play out in one of the most divisive conflicts in the world today, that between Israel and the Palestinians. When I was a student here at Columbia, I had promised myself 
I was never going to get involved in the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. I felt like there was way too much attention being paid to it, and all that attention wasn't really helping. But when I arrived in Jerusalem to work on my first film, something struck me. It was true that a lot of attention was being paid to it, but it was the wrong kind of attention. While the media focused on violent actors or failed political agreements, the Palestinian and Israeli civilians working to end the occupation and the conflict through classic civil disobedience went unnoticed. For example, how many of you are aware that hundreds of Palestinian prisoners in Israel are currently on an open-ended hunger strike, now in its 28th day, seeking to improve prison conditions. The graduating class of 2017 is doing pretty well. <laughs> but not that many among us, and I don't blame you. The media has consistently failed to reinforce nonviolence by ignoring acts of civil disobedience when they happen. That's true in Palestine and elsewhere. That's why, for the past 13 years, working with a nonprofit called Just Vision, I've dedicated my life trying to transform this dynamic. Together with an extraordinary team of Israelis, Palestinians, and North Americans, I have researched, documented, and disseminated the stories of hundreds of Israeli and Palestinian civilians working to end the conflict through nonviolent means. Most recently, we brought the stories of nonviolent resistance emanating from a Palestinian village in the West Bank called Budrus and a neighborhood in Jerusalem called Sheikh Jarrah. In a few months, we'll be releasing a new film which tells the story of four Palestinian women who led a nonviolent uprising in the late 1980s that shaped the history of the conflict but who have remained completely anonymous until now. The men and women we portray face harsh consequences for their activism. But in the future, I am confident we will look back at them with the admiration we today reserve to Gandhi, Martin Luther King, and Mandela. There is a lot of work to do before that time comes. But the good news is that we all carry in ourselves the power to bring that forth. By choosing the way we look at the world, we can change it. I am optimistic, not because the problems we're facing are small, but because I know that our ability to overcome challenges is much greater than we often give ourselves credit for. So my challenge to the graduating class of 2017 is this. Are we going to be proactive in helping shape the world we believe is possible? Or are we going to be reactive in feeding the world we fear? Whatever field you are about to enter, be it the law, anthropology, theater, medicine, film, engineering, astronomy, I encourage you to bring fresh eyes to your field and to take the time to understand what kinds of functional behaviors prior generations of lawyers, doctors, actors or engineers have been encouraging. Are those good functional behaviors? Would we be better off by nurturing other dynamics? This word takes discipline. I've learned this is a lifelong practice. But being mindful of where we pay attention to can help us build a much more cooperative, beautiful, and fulfilling world. So as you walk out of here, Remind yourself of the power that you all carry inherently inside of you and the responsibility that comes with it. Where you turn your attention every day has huge consequences to the world we live in. We can shape the dynamics of world conflicts, ensure the best ideas move forward, and live happier, more meaningful lives by carefully choosing where we turn the most valuable currency of our times. Thank you.
Thank you, Julia. In the first line of her application essay, our salutatorian Roseanne Gooding Silverwood writes, I grew up in Texas, land of blue skies and BS. <laughs> so I guess one could say that I was born and bred for fiction. Roseanne, a child of the 60s and 70s, sang in a band and aspired to be a rock star. She taught and ran ashrams in California and New York. She met and married the man of her dreams. She wrote an award-winning children's book and created an acclaimed writing curriculum for elementary school students while also raising three children. Two of her three daughters are Columbia graduates. After taking a few courses at Northern Virginia Community College, Roseanne was hooked. She decided to follow in her daughter's footsteps and apply to Columbia, where she has had a stellar academic career. This past April, she was guest speaker at the Dynamic Women's Conference where she presented the results of her claimed senior thesis. Roseanne's time at Columbia has been transformative in many ways, which she will tell you about herself. Roseanne Gooding Silverwood graduates with better than an A average, honors in anthropology, summa cum laude, phi beta kappa, and as a member of the GS Honor Society. Next year, she will continue to pursue her master's in oral history here at Columbia, a program that she began this past semester. Please join me in welcoming the salutatorian of the class of 2017 and force of nature, Roseanne Gooding Silverwood. President Bollinger, Provost Coatesworth, Provost Vole, Executive Vice President Madigan, Vice President Ip, our beloved Dean On, woo, <laughs> fellow graduates, families. Nitaki Chokma, good morning. Yamikma Ilimomakat Ilo Ilibacha Fichi. May we be together as one on the sacred indigenous land of the Lene Lenape people. By the end of this fall semester, I had completed the requirements for graduation, but decided to stay on in order to study the Chickasaw language, the mother tongue that my grandfathers and grandmothers were forbidden to speak in the missionary schools of Indian Territory. The reclamation of my family's language and erased indigenous heritage is one of the most precious gifts that I take with me as I graduate. I am indebted to the professors and colleagues who provided me with the history and language that enabled me to hear what the ghosts haunting my family tree had to say about the unconquered and unconquerable spirit of indigenous peoples. I'm especially grateful to Professor Audra Simpson, always quick to admonish me whenever I introduced myself as a second class student, what is it with you GSers, she'd say. Don't you know how much professors love you? <laughs> she never let me forget that I have something of value to add to Columbia University, 
the Chickasaw Nation, and the Native American community at large. Part of learning the Chickasaw language entails an elder giving you your Indian name. Since my own Chickasaw father and grandfather have passed away, I asked my eldest daughter to name me. Soholchifoat Ankankabi Achok Malichosi. I am called Tender Hawk. Because of a medicine walk that I took last year in Riverside Park, and my encounter with a red-tailed hawk who returned something to me that I had lost before I came to GS, something that I hoped the school would help me to recover. For those who are unfamiliar, a medicine walk is an indigenous curing ceremony that basically entails going for a walk remaining alert for signs that might offer guidance to a particularly vexing problem. Whether it's a relationship conflict or deciding on an automobile purchase, Indians have always seemed to understood that the science behind keeping one's feet moving is in order for the brain to become more receptive to insight. My struggle had to do with writing my senior thesis. I had hit a wall. I could not write. I could not think. I could not imagine how I would ever find my way out of my academic paralysis. Clearly, I'm not the first person, student, to have suffered from writing block with a senior thesis. So I should give a little background in order for you to appreciate the weight of that literary standstill. I am a writer. I have considered myself a writer ever since I was in the fifth grade and wrote a poetry book for my mother entitled, My Sullen Childhood. <laughs> so naturally, in the personal essay that I had to write for my application to GS, I bragged about my expertise. The dozens of writing workshops I'd attended, my published short stories, and the award I had received for a children's story I wrote about the Chickasaw's forced removal from our homeland on the Trail of Tears. I also offered up my most meaningful accomplishment, the successful writing program that I had developed and taught that gave hundreds of Fairfax County elementary school students the experience of writing, editing, and publishing school literary journals. What I failed to mention in that glowing account of my literary talents was that in the year preceding my application, I had stopped writing, period, nada, kaput. I would sit at my desk and stare at the blank page in a daze of self-loathing. Plenty of writers will tell you that there's no such thing as writer's block. With my own students, I would share the advice that children's book author Jane Yolen offers for getting unstuck. B-I-C, but in chair. <laughs> but when I found myself in the thick of parenting three teenage and young adult daughters, my writing world turned upside down. As my daughters were swept up into the firestorm of bullying, drug and alcohol abuse, eating disorders, sexual assaults, and suicide attempts, I found out just how little control I had over my life and my daughter's choices. By the time one of my twin daughters was diagnosed with borderline personality disorder, any fantasy that I had of an intact family was shattered. I became as bereft and empty of daylight as Demeter when her daughter Persephone was abducted to the underworld. For Demeter, Flowers no longer blossomed. 
For me, words no longer held meaning, and I stopped writing. Any parent who has lived with a child suffering from trauma or severe mental illness knows that there are some things from which a family never comes back. I cannot conceive that I will ever be able to write my way out of the dark days that came before or after the diagnosis. But apparently, I wasn't ready to give up on writing entirely. Because when one of my daughters got into Columbia College and then mentioned that she would not be averse to me applying to GS, <laughs> I sat down and started writing that personal essay like my life depended on it. In retrospect, it probably did. I had always regretted dropping out of college back in the early 70s. So why not seize that demon by the horns? If someone gave me a writing assignment, rather than my having to pull unicorns out of my ears, perhaps that might jumpstart my creative juices. I was accepted into GS, and although I was a tad nervous on that first day of university writing class, I entered the room thinking, hey, I was a writer once, I've got this. But after taking one look at the syllabus, I was like, what the hell have I got myself into? <laughs> Fortunately, this was one of the few classes where older GS students are in the majority. So I was spared the humiliation of having younger students witness my tears as I discovered just how far in over my head I was. But as humiliated as I felt, I did not want my daughters to see me quit. From that moment on, it was a furious, nonstop scramble. Not only did I have to navigate the rigors within these ivy-covered halls, I was managing a long-distance marriage, stumbling on the treacherous rim rocks of my daughter's mental illness, meanwhile jetting to Texas twice a month to do crossword puzzles with my mother who was sliding deeper into dementia in the year before she passed away. What I saw my, when I saw my GS colleagues managing similarly trying circumstances and moreover holding down full-time jobs, it was hard to feel sorry for myself. But here's the weird thing. With little time to think about the devastation taking place in my personal life, the rigor and the pace of my classes gave me relief. Whether I was conjugating verbs for Catalan or formatting footnotes for an anthropology essay, homework was etish holitopa, sacred medicine. In fact, had it not been for the demands of this institution, combined with the compassion of those academic advisors, professors, and classmates who knew of my family situation, I believe I would have jumped off a cliff. And somewhere along the way, I recovered my love of writing. Maybe it was because I was so close to finishing my degree that I could taste it, but when I saw that senior thesis looming on the horizon, I froze. Once again, it was just me, the blank page, and my self-loathing. That's why I took the medicine walk. And there I was, heading back home, still feeling confused and doubtful about how to proceed. And just as I was about to cross Riverside Drive, I happened to look up. And there, perched on the ledge of one of the apartment buildings, I spied a couple of red-tailed hawks. As soon as I saw them, one hawk leapt off the ledge and with wings tucked 
in a glorious free fall as if I were some sort of delicious prey, she dove straight at me. This weird mix of terror and astonishment caused me to let out a yelp and suddenly, in a spectacle of avian grandstanding, the hawk opened her wings and swept right over the top of my head. And when I turned around to see where she'd flown, I found her perched on a tree branch right behind me. She looked directly at me as if to say, Iho, woman, there is no good reason why you should not be riding with the same mastery that I fly. I went home and began to write with a fearless intensity. And I have to say, I absolutely crushed that thesis. <laughs> A few weeks ago, one of my favorite professors, Thomas Roma, was talking in class about overcoming creative blocks, saying, look, one day a baby bird doesn't know how to fly, the next it does, and after that it never forgets. Whether or not I am able to sustain my confidence outside the safe nest of this institution remains to be seen. Honestly, I'm as tentative about my future as any one of you here who, like me, might not have that dream job lined up after graduation. I know my family will continue to deal with the fallout of trauma and mental illness, but we are learning to find tenderness with each other and ourselves. Meanwhile, my husband has been counting the days until I graduate so that we can spend an entire weekend together without my having to do homework. <laughs> Certainly, this honor of salutatorian obligates me to keep writing. But more important, I hope to never again forget what it feels like to fly. Yamo Mashki. Each year, the alumni key is awarded to a senior who has achieved distinction both academically and through service to the undergraduate community. This year, the alumni key award will be presented by our distinguished alumnus and co-chair of the GS Alumni Association, Mr. Jesse Dean. Jesse graduated cum laude from GS in 2008 with a major in sociology and creative writing. Mr. Dean is Director of Di Digital Communications and Marketing at the Visiting Nurse Association Health Group. Since his graduation, Jesse has been one of the most loyal, active, and committed members of the GS alumni community. The 2017 Alumni Key is awarded to Aaron Gaventer. Aaron, Aaron has had an almost two decade, decade career as a professional dancer, as well as producer and designer of live theater and dance events across the country. At Columbia, Ms. Gaventer has completed a film major with honors while also pursuing serious coursework and research in art history and cultural anthropology. One of her recent films has been accepted by the Columbia University 
Film Festival. A true internationalist, Erin has, during her time at Columbia, pursued seven different international programs in places as diverse as Mexico, France, and Japan. Erin's engagement with the Columbia community has been nothing short of amazing. Her involvements range from orientation to mental health, the mid-semester success series, military veterans, student council, and many, many other impactful and transformational efforts. Erin's legacy at GS in Columbia will be felt for many years to come. Erin Gaventer graduates with honors in film, summa cum laude, Phi Beta Kappa, and as a member of the GS Honor Society. Congratulations, Erin. We are particularly pleased this year to present the second annual Campbell Award. The original announcement of the award two years ago reads, the university trustees and the board of the Columbia Alumni Association established the Campbell Award, presented by the Columbia Alumni Association to the graduating senior at each school who shows exceptional leadership and Columbia, ex, uh, Columbia spirit exemplified by the late Bill Campbell, Columbia College class of 62, Teachers College class of 64, Chair Emeritus of the Board of Trustees and co-founder of the Columbia Alumni Association. The Campbell Award will be presented by Mr. Justin Nathaniel Carter, GS14, who came from California to be with us today. Justin is a clinical researcher in the Department of Radiation Oncology at Stanford Medical School. He is currently a member of the board of the Columbia Alumni Association. While an undergraduate at GS, Justin held so many important positions the list is too long to read. <laughs> I will mention, however, that he served as GS Senator for two years and was an incredible force for positive change in the community. While a student, Justin also amassed the largest collection known to exist of genuinely unflattering photos of me. <laughs> You won't have me to kick around anymore. No. <laughs> the winner of this year's Campbell Award is Mr. Franklin Ford. Franklin. Franklin is a native New Yorker, and at GS, he majored in architecture. Franklin is a Beeson Research Fellow and Gilman Scholar. At GS, he served as an orientation leader and junior marshal multiple times. Franklin is president and co-founder of the Student Color Alliance, a member of the GS Health and Wellness Coalition, a peer advisor, a member of the university's race, ethnicity, and inclusion task force, and senior class president. This, this summer, as part of a Japanese government-sponsored program, Franklin will be teaching in Japan about the influence of architecture in society. Next year, he will begin a master's program in urban planning at the Kent School of Architecture in Canterbury, England. 
please join me in congratulating our Campbell Award winner, Franklin Ford. Fabulous. The remaining academic prizes and awards for leadership were presented at the Student Leadership and Academic Prizes Dinner on May 2nd. Please refer to your program for the names of these extraordinary graduates who represent in a compelling way the Columbia tradition of academic excellence and commitment to community service. Good morning. My name is Tom Harford, and I'm the Dean of Students in the School of General Studies. <laughs> President Bollinger, Provost Coatsworth, Executive Vice President Madigan, Chaplain Davis, Provost Wall, Vice President Ip, Dean On, Ms. Bacha, Dean Valentini, Mr. Dean, Mr. Carter, distinguished faculty, dedicated alumni, assembled guests. It is my pleasure to present to you our candidates for the Bachelor of Arts in the School of General Studies class of 2017. Each degree candidate will receive a certificate of achievement from President Bollinger and will pause very briefly to be photographed with Dean On. Jesse Dean, GS class of 2008, will present each graduate with a GS alumni pin. Wear this pin with pride and let it serve as a reminder of your academic achievement and the time you spent at GS. Now, to the wonderful, supportive, and vocal family and friends that have gathered today, I humbly ask that you please hold your applause until the graduates have been presented on the stage. We would not want to have one family's excitement drown out the presentation of another proud family's graduate. I promise you there will be plenty of opportunities for applause and celebration when the presentation of the class of 2017 is complete. Thank you so much for your understanding and restraint. <laughs> With a few exceptions here and there, this year's class will be presented in alphabetical order, approximately. <laughs> will the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Arts please step forward? For us, Abdul Samad, Bachelor of Arts, Middle Eastern, South Asian, and African Studies. Franklin Forbes, Bachelor of Arts, Architecture. Aaron Courtney Gaventer, Bachelor of Arts, Film and Media Studies, Departmental Honors, Phi Beta Kappa. Eli Abatul, Bachelor of Arts, Financial Economics. Ross William Adler, Bachelor of Arts, Sociology with a Concentration in History. Laura Cabrera, Bachelor of Arts, Psychology. Matan Zinnemann, Bachelor of Arts, Philosophy, Concentration in Linguistics, Cum Laude. Amri Adman, Bachelor of Arts, Economics, Philosophy. Jessica Aguilar Hernandez, Bachelor of Arts, Human Rights. Theodore Wesley Alsfeld, Bachelor of Arts, Computer Science with a Concentration in Mathematics. Joya Ashan Ahmad, Bachelor of Arts, Neuroscience and Behavior, Cum Laude. Juan David Alvarez, Bachelor of Arts, Art History, Cum Laude. Roseanne Gooding Silverwood, Bachelor of Arts, Anthropology, Summa Cum Laude, Departmental Honors, Phi Beta Kappa. Colin Burgess Valentini, Bachelor of Arts, Applied Mathematics, Summa Cum Laude, Phi Beta Kappa. Spencer John Alfson, Bachelor of Arts, English. Irma Alianieri, Bachelor of Arts, Psychology, Departmental Honors, Phi Beta Kappa. Adi Luf, Bachelor of Arts, Religion, Magna Cum Laude. Stevie Terrell Alston, Bachelor of Arts, Architecture. Amran David Altsman, Bachelor of Arts, Sociology, Magna Cum Laude. Michael Alvarez, Bachelor of Arts, Economics. Oscar Alvarez, Bachelor of Arts, Economics, Mathematics, Phi Beta Kappa. Mariel Alvino, Bachelor of Arts, Financial Economics, Magna Cum Laude. Robin Jacob Amiga, Bachelor of Arts, Economics. Yardin Absalom, Bachelor of Arts, Economics. P. 
Pierre-Edouard Antoquille, Bachelor of Arts, Political Science, Statistics, Summa Cum Laude, Phi Beta Kappa. Genevieve Antono, Bachelor of Arts, Political Science, Magna Cum Laude. Donna Sarah Ascari, Bachelor of Arts, History and Middle Eastern, South Asian and African Studies, double major, Magna Cum Laude. Brad Bradley Assam, Bachelor of Arts, Economics Cum Laude. Rebecca Asseline Berra, Bachelor of Arts Economics, Concentration in American Studies, Summa Cum Laude, Phi Beta Kappa. Abdulatif Azamov, Bachelor of Arts, Financial Economics. Lucas James Balbi, Bachelor of Arts, Financial Economics. Aisha Janet Banawi, Bachelor of Arts, Ethnicity and Race Studies. Graham McCann Barra, Bachelor of Arts, Computer Science, Cum Laude. Dila Barboza, Bachelor of Arts, Psychology. Charlotte Christine Barnett, Bachelor of Arts, Film and Media Studies. Anna Barskaya, Bachelor of Arts, Economics, Concentration in Art History. Christopher Michael Beierschmidt, Bachelor of Arts, Biological Sciences. Gabriela Ayelet Burnett Cunin, Bachelor of Arts, Sociology. Janine Julia Baker, Bachelor of Arts, Religion, Magna Cum Laude. Davida Danielle Biggins, Bachelor of Arts, Philosophy, Cum Laude. Holly Lynn Black, Bachelor of Arts, Visual Arts. Elizabeth Wyatt Blackwell, Bachelor of Arts, Psychology, Magna Cum Laude, Departmental Honors. Alice Marie Manuel Blanchard, Bachelor of Arts, Political Science, Concentration, Business Management. Charles Harry Bloomsack, Bachelor of Arts, Computer Science, Cum Laude. Elliot Locke Bowles, Bachelor of Arts, Philosophy, Cum Laude. Caroline Cascada Braga, Bachelor of Arts, Political Science. Noah Joseph Bray, Bachelor of Arts, Sociology, Cum Laude. Nicolani Elizabeth Brown, Bachelor of Arts, Biological Sciences, Summa Cum Laude, Phi Beta Kappa. Leslie Bruce, Bachelor of Arts, Psychology, Cum Laude. Lydia Bell, Bachelor of Arts, Religion, Cum Laude. Charles Jared Buckley, Bachelor of Arts, Mathematics, Statistics. Jake Bullock, Bachelor of Arts, Computer Science, Cum Laude. Lauren Burns Coney, Bachelor of Arts, Philosophy and Psychology, double major, magna cum laude. Talia Yvonne Burton, Bachelor of Arts, Political Science, magna cum laude. Ricardo Alberto Bustamante, Bachelor of Arts, Music, magna cum laude. Graham Thomas Cairns, Bachelor of Arts, Human Rights, Concentration, East Asian Studies, magna cum laude. Rosalie Florence Yvonne Calvez Sobiran, Bachelor of Arts, History, summa cum laude, Phi Beta Kappa. Lucas Fania Capra, Bachelor of Arts, Political Science. Rachel Michelle Cardero, Bachelor of Arts, Psychology. Alexander Shavitz, Bachelor of Arts, Political Science. Shay Chan, Bachelor of Arts, Financial Economics, Cum Laude. Albert In Chang, Bachelor of Arts, Political Science, Concentration in English. Kai Zheng Ching, Bachelor of Arts, Political Science. Ming Tu Viche, Bachelor of Arts, Psychology, summa cum laude. Sarah Morgan Charles, Bachelor of Arts, Neurosciences and Behavior, Concentration in Computer Science. Gregory Luan Chen, Bachelor of Arts, Computer Science, magna cum laude. Zhuang Hei Shen, Bachelor of Arts, Financial Economics. Nicholas Albert René Cheneau, Bachelor of Arts, Computer Science. Nicolau Sivit Moish, Bachelor of Arts, Economics, magna cum laude. Suji Choi, Bachelor of Arts, Neuroscience and Behavior. Huang Nai Choi, Bachelor of Arts, Economics. Daniel H. Ko, Bachelor of Arts, Computer Science, Magna Cum Laude. Carlos James Costoso, Bachelor of Arts, Film and Media Studies, Magna Cum Laude. Shane Counts, Bachelor of Arts, Economics, Cum Laude. Robert Alva Kane, Bachelor of Arts, Urban Studies, Summa Cum Laude, Departmental Honors, Phi Beta Kappa. Mark Jared Critoro, Bachelor of Arts, Sociology with a concentration in Visual Arts. Gregory Velarta Cuesta, Bachelor of Arts, Information Sciences. John Leonard Davis, Bachelor of Arts, French and Francophone Studies. Valerie Ann Dawson, Bachelor of Arts, Computer Science and Mathematics. Melissa Bouliat Denise, Bachelor of Arts, Financial Economics. Daniel Mark Tassa, Bachelor of Arts, Political Science. Avika Chaim Dolan, Bachelor of Arts, Computer Science. Armando Antao Domingos, Bachelor of Arts, Earth Sciences. Dante Elio Dorazio, Bachelor of Arts, Chemistry, Summa Cum Laude, Departmental Honors, Phi Beta Kappa. 
Tiago Dos Santos, Bachelor of Arts, Political Science. Lauren Danielle Caliolo, Bachelor of Arts, Political Science. Said Mohamed Doski, Bachelor of Arts, Economics. Don Ruth Doyle, Bachelor of Arts, English. Matthew Gardner Doyle, Bachelor of Arts, Political Science, Summa Cum Laude, Phi Beta Kappa. Charles Francois Marie du Passage, Bachelor of Arts, Economics, Political Science, Summa Cum Laude. Megan Elizabeth Edwards, Bachelor of Arts, Women and Gender Studies, Concentration in English, Magna Cum Laude. Andrew Robert Ertle, Bachelor of Arts, History, Cum Laude. Oliver Michael Escardo, Bachelor of Arts, Political Science. Lauren Marie Fabiano, Bachelor of Arts, Sustainable Development. Guy Gerard Fabre, Bachelor of Arts, Economics. Mohamed Mustafa Fall, Bachelor of Arts, Financial Economics, Magna Cum Laude. Shai Peng Fong, Bachelor of Arts, History. Pierre In Fong, Bachelor of Arts, Mathematics, Statistics, Magna Cum Laude, Statistics, Departmental Honors. Diego Fulio, Bachelor of Arts, Political Science, Summa Cum Laude, Phi Beta Kappa. Valerie Jean Fent, Bachelor of Arts, History, Summa Cum Laude, Departmental Honors. Cecile Marie Ferriot, Bachelor of Arts, Financial Economics, Summa Cum Laude, Phi Beta Kappa. Mika Fleck, Bachelor of Arts, Anthropology, Cum Laude. Catherine Fohman, Bachelor of Arts, Computer Science. Carrie Fox, Bachelor of Arts, Architecture. Jessica Alston, Madeline Friedman, Bachelor of Arts, Ethnicity and Race, Summa Cum Laude, Departmental Honors, Phi Beta Kappa. Wanong Gao, Bachelor of Arts, Philosophy, Visual Arts, Cum Laude. Jennifer Garcia, Bachelor of Arts, Psychology. Jennifer Jane Garrison, Bachelor of Arts, English, Concentration in Jazz Studies. Benjamin Scott Giardardo, Bachelor of Arts, Economics, Cum Laude. Ryan Glenn Gepford, Bachelor of Arts, Sociology. Arita Hari, Bachelor of Arts, English and Comparative Literature. Connor Griffin Getz, Bachelor of Arts, History, Summa Cum Laude. Rudra Gopinath, Bachelor of Arts, Computer Science, Summa Cum Laude, Phi Beta Kappa. Sid Longat, Bachelor of Arts, Psychology. Matthias Julian Granduri, Bachelor of Arts, Political Science, Concentration in Business Management, Magna Cum Laude. Elijah Zachary Grant, Bachelor of Arts, Political Science, Summa Cum Laude, Phi Beta Kappa. Miles Lott Grantham, Bachelor of Arts, Political Science. Madeline Gray, Bachelor of Arts, Visual Art. Ari Solomon Greenberg, Bachelor of Arts, Yiddish Language and Literature. Daria Grino, Bachelor of Arts, Economics. Morgan Joan Davis, Bachelor of Arts, Political Science. Corey Benjamin Hurst, Bachelor of Arts, Political Science, Magna Cum Laude. Elizabeth Adam Hiss, Bachelor of Arts, Economics. Kurt Edward Grunsky, Bachelor of Arts, Mathematics. Benjamin Gulian, Bachelor of Arts, Economics, Magna Cum Laude. Itai Hadari, Bachelor of Arts, Neuroscience and Behavior. Sharon Halevi, Bachelor of Arts, Middle Eastern, South Asian and African Studies with a concentration in Jewish Studies. Jin Han, Bachelor of Arts, Political Science. Ryan Lee Hauslauer, Bachelor of Arts, Political Science. Clara Matilda Herlin, Bachelor of Arts, Financial Economics, Magna Cum Laude. Grace Anne Marie Harard, Bachelor of Arts, Psychology. Leora Sarah Herman, Bachelor of Arts, Psychology, Cum Laude. Barbara Ann Hickam, Bachelor of Arts, Sustainable Development. Bu Huang Yang, Bachelor of Arts, Political Science. Jean Emma Iffergen, Bachelor of Arts, Political Science, Concentration in Sociology, Magna Cum Laude. Michael Scott Hickey, Bachelor of Arts, English and History double major. Jake Aaron Hill, Bachelor of Arts, Classical Studies, Magna Cum Laude. Maria Carolina Hines, Bachelor of Arts, Human Rights. Corbin Arthur Hines, Bachelor of Arts, East Asian Studies, Cum Laude. Carolina Vanessa Hodgson, Bachelor of Arts, Latin American and Caribbean Studies. Ariela Giato Hole, Bachelor of Arts, Middle Eastern, South Asian and African Studies. Youth Beatrice Hollander, Bachelor of Arts, Theater Arts. Stuart Miles Hick Hickson, Hicken, Bachelor of Arts, East Asian Studies, Magna Cum Laude, Departmental Honors. Michael Wayne Hughes, Bachelor of Arts, Sociology, Concentration in Psychology. Samuel Patrick Hughes, Bachelor of Arts, History, Cum Laude. So Young Jo, Bachelor of Arts, Mathematics, Statistics. Anna Jo, Bachelor of Arts, Human Rights. Isabella Alina Victoria Johansson, Bachelor of Arts, Physics. Maya Louise Hunt, Bachelor of Arts, Evolutionary Biology of the Human Species, Cum Laude. Andrew Joseph Hurt, Bachelor of Arts, Philosophy with a Concentration in German Literature, Magna Cum Laude. Mi Joan Huang, Bachelor of Arts, Computer Science. 
Amit Elani, Bachelor of Arts, Financial Economics. Binish Hershad, Bachelor of Arts, Economics. Rochelle Chavon, Juanita Jackson, Bachelor of Arts, Computer Science. Mohammed Ali Jamal, Bachelor of Arts, Political Science. Haydar Jamal Baba, Bachelor of Arts, Economics. Corey Alexander Freeman, Bachelor of Arts, Economics, Summa Cum Laude, Phi Beta Kappa. Seong Jin Kim, Bachelor of Arts, Mathematics, Statistics. Jung Won Kim, Bachelor of Arts, Economics, Cum Laude. Sylvie Jensen, Bachelor of Arts, Human Rights. Anika Jelani, Bachelor of Arts, Creative Writing, Business Concentration, Summa Cum Laude. Jun Suk Jin, Bachelor of Arts, Mathematics, Statistics, Cum Laude. Brian Adam Jones, Bachelor of Arts, Political Science. Janice Margaret Joseph, Bachelor of Arts, Political Science, Cum Laude. Jelena Jovic Anderson, Bachelor of Arts, Political Science. Taryn King, Bachelor of Arts, Political Science. Elif Karachia, Bachelor of Arts, Human Rights, Magna Cum Laude. Braden Michael Harris Katzman, Bachelor of Arts, Computer Science. Brett Jordan Krasner, Bachelor of Arts, Political Science. Sonam Pakasha Shatriya, Bachelor of Arts, Creative Writing. Marwan Wasim Kawadri, Bachelor of Arts, Economics, Philosophy, Cum Laude. Peter James Kiernan, Bachelor of Arts, Political Science, Magna Cum Laude. Young Suk Kim, Bachelor of Arts, Mathematics, Statistics. Taiwo Kim, Bachelor of Arts, Economics, Statistics, Cum Laude. Courtney Elizabeth King, Bachelor of Arts, Sociology, Summa Cum Laude, Departmental Honors, Phi Beta Kappa. Nicholas Thurman Kirby, Bachelor of Arts, Sustainable Development. Emily Clovening, Bachelor of Arts, Political Science, Magna Cum Laude. Daniela Kogan, Bachelor of Arts, Psychology. Noam Ezra Kornsgold, Bachelor of Arts History, Summa Cum Laude, Phi Beta Kappa. Lindsay Ray Corquezwa, Bachelor of Arts, Middle Eastern, South Asian American Studies, Summa Cum Laude. Christopher Hannigan, Bachelor of Arts, Creative Writing. Justin Lean, Bachelor of Arts, Financial Economics. Yadin Koshitsky, Bachelor of Arts, History, Magna Cum Laude. John Joseph Kosekwat, Bachelor of Arts, Neuroscience Behavior, Cum Laude. Matthew Brian Kotek, Bachelor of Arts, Psychology. Elza Vita Kolko, Bachelor of Arts, Chemistry. Peter Andrew Laffey, Bachelor of Arts, Computer Sciences and Economics, Double Major. Alexandra Chloe Lake, Bachelor of Arts, English, Summa Cum Laude, Phi Beta Kappa. Brock Lemon, Bachelor of Arts, English. Julia Everts Lang, Bachelor of Arts, Human Rights. Young Jai Lee, Bachelor of Arts, Economics, Magna Cum Laude. Armand Emmanuel Latre, Bachelor of Arts, Political Science, Cum Laude, Departmental Honors. Valentine Mary Lene, Bachelor of Arts, Human Rights, Business Management Concentration, Cum Laude. Rachel Lazar, Bachelor of Arts, Psychology, Summa Cum Laude, Phi Beta Kappa. Fernand Pierre Joseph Lefebvre, Bachelor of Arts, Political Science, Cum Laude. Ya Ting Lee, Bachelor of Arts, Political Science. Jai Ho Aaron Lee, Bachelor of Arts, Economics, Mathematics. Benjamin Jesse Pacho, Bachelor of Arts, Political Science with a concentration in human rights. Elsa Maria Lee, Bachelor of Arts, Film and Media and Financial Economics, double major. Johansson McGuire Lee, Bachelor of Arts, Middle Eastern, South Asian and African Studies, magna cum laude. Kin Jung Long, Bachelor of Arts, Statistics, magna cum laude. Andrew Lewis, Bachelor of Arts, Psychology with a concentration in political science. Zhang Li, Bachelor of Arts, Psychology. William Lim, Bachelor of Arts, Middle Eastern, South Asian, and African Studies. Patrick Lim, Bachelor of Arts, Financial Economics. Jane Christine Luca, Bachelor of Arts, German Literature and Culture, History, de uh, and uh, Departmental Honors. Xing Liu, Bachelor of Arts, Philosophy. Xin Ran Ma, Bachelor of Arts, Financial Economics with a concentration in Mathematics. Austin Louis Mantel, Bachelor of Arts, Creative Writing, Summa Cum Laude, Departmental Honors, Phi Beta Kappa. Kelsey Christine Markey, Bachelor of Arts, Environmental Science, Magna Cum Laude. Zachary Theodora Masek, Bachelor of Arts, History. MJ Matera, Bachelor of Arts, Psychology, Cum Laude. Julius Anami Ninba, Bachelor of Arts, Biological Sciences. Jacini Nueces, Bachelor of Arts, Sociology. James Joseph McConnell, Bachelor of Arts, Philosophy. Ian Andrew Mikichi, Bachelor of Arts, Double Major, Philosophy and Political Science, Summa Cum Laude, Departmental Honors, Phi Beta Kappa. Sarah Ashton McKenna, Bachelor of Arts, Political Science. Dakota Wayne Meadows, Bachelor of Arts, Financial Economics, Cum Laude. Oliver William Arend Mee, Bachelor of Arts, Political Science. 
Ajay Ade Mehta, Bachelor of Arts, Computer Science, Magna Cum Laude. Nidia Jasmine Melendez, Bachelor of, Bachelor of Arts, Psychology. Javier Enrique Mendez, Bachelor of Arts, Political Science, Concentration in Visual Arts, Cum Laude. Asia Mercedo, Bachelor of Arts, Creative Writing. Christina Maria Mihalescu, Bachelor of Arts, Sustainable Development, Magna Cum Laude. Tony D. Senatore, Bachelor of Arts, Sociology, Magna Cum Laude. Barrett Azaya Mendel, Bachelor of Arts, Film and Media Studies, Magna Cum Laude. Ilias Amin Marawi, Bachelor of Arts, Financial Economics, Concentration in Business, Summa Cum Laude, Phi Beta Kappa. Summer Blake Michu, Bachelor of Arts, Political Science. Tanya Mo, Bachelor of Arts, Art History, Cum Laude. Zachary Moffat, Bachelor of Arts, Computer Science and German Language, Literature and Culture and Society. Vera Mullen, Bachelor of Arts, History, Magna Cum Laude. Matthew Thanlan Monin, Bachelor of Arts, Economics, Magna Cum Laude. Raul Luis Montano, Bachelor of Arts, Sustainable Development. Michael William Morgan, Bachelor of Arts, Political Science. Chase J. Morgan, Bachelor of Arts, Biochemistry, Magna Cum Laude, Departmental Honors. Mohamed Masayebi, Bachelor of Arts, Neurosciences Behavior, Pre-Medical Concentration, Cum Laude. Manza Mazavi, Bachelor of Arts, Physics, with a concentration in Mathematics. Colin Anthony Mueller, Bachelor of Arts, Political Science, Summa Cum Laude. Arnaud Louise Mueller, Bachelor of Arts, Financial Economics. Mafred Munoz Jimenez, Bachelor of Arts, Neurosciences and Behavior. Marianne Mustak, Bachelor of Arts, Sociology. Rafael Ernesto Najera, Bachelor of Arts, Political Science. David Matthew Neer, Bachelor of Arts, Economics. Michael Harrison Nyer, Bachelor of Arts, Political Science, Magna Cum Laude. Colin William Newman, Bachelor of Arts, Anthropology. Ibrahima Nyang, Bachelor of Arts, Computer Science. Andrew Douglas Nicholson, Nicholas, Bachelor of Arts, Double Major History and Political Science. Eric Pauls Nicholas, Bachelor of Arts, Political Science, Concentration in Middle Eastern, South Asian, African Studies, Summa Cum Laude, Phi Beta Kappa. Sarah Elizabeth Novak Lerner, Bachelor of Arts, Psychology, Summa Cum Laude, Phi Beta Kappa. Safi Shimon, Bachelor of Arts, Psychology, Magna Cum Laude. Jennifer Michelle Nugent, Bachelor of Arts, Neurosciences and Behavior, Cum Laude. Constance Geneva Nuttall, Bachelor of Arts, Film and Media Studies, Departmental Honors, Summa Cum Laude, Phi Beta Kappa. Steven Gerard O'Connell, Bachelor of Arts History, Concentration Sociology, Cum Laude. Pema Ankmu, Bachelor of Arts Psychology. Andrew John O'Reilly, Bachelor of Arts Computer Science, Summa Cum Laude. Justin James Auten, Bachelor of Arts History, Cum Laude. Young Hui Park, Bachelor of Arts Mathematics, Cum Laude. Insuk Park, Bachelor of Arts Film and Media Studies, Cum Laude. Sang Uk Park, Bachelor of Arts Sociology. Hyung Bin Park, Bachelor of Arts Economics, Mathematics, Cum Laude. Scotty Lynn Schaefer, Bachelor of Arts Environmental Biology. Amber Ruth Paul, and Bachelor of Arts Creative Writing, Summa Cum Laude. Alexander Fox Person, Bachelor of Arts Human Rights. Robert Douglas Pick Pickett, Bachelor of Arts History. Karine Piton, Bachelor of Arts Financial Economics. Valeria Pizzi, Bachelor of Arts Human Rights and Psychology, Double Major, Cum Laude. Cameron Robert Pope, Bachelor of Arts, Political Science. Anis Kedi Porto, Bachelor of Arts, Human Rights, Concentration of Visual Arts, Magna Cum Laude. Andrew Peter Proto, Bachelor of Arts, Biological Sciences. Courtney Marie Pruden, Bachelor of Arts, Slavic Studies. John A. Patek, Bachelor of Arts, Political Science. Jai Yang Lee, Bachelor of Arts, Mathematics, Summa Cum Laude, Phi Beta Kappa. Ryan Win Winfield Ramsey, Bachelor of Arts, Psychology, Magna Cum Laude. Maximo Silvestre Rangel, Bachelor of Arts, Political Science. Sean Morgan Raymond, Bachelor of Arts, Neurosciences and Behavior. Ashley Patrice Reed, Bachelor of Arts, Architecture, Departmental Honors, Cum Laude. Huang Wu Park, Bachelor of Arts, Mathematics, Statistics, Cum Laude. Arthur Davidson, Arthur David Patterson, Bachelor of Arts, English and Political Science, Double Major. Jeremy Julian Rees, Bachelor of Arts, Art History and History Double Major, Summa Cum Laude, Departmental Honors Phi Beta Kappa. Stephanie Alexandra Renault, Bachelor of Arts, Economic Political Science, Cum Laude. Jonathan Racino, Bachelor of Arts, Information Sciences. 
Max Gabriel Reddick, Bachelor of Arts Creative Writing, Cum Laude. Sophia Ree, Bachelor of Arts Sustainable Development, Magna Cum Laude, Departmental Honors. Haley Mitchell Richelson, Bachelor of Arts Economic Environmental Sciences. Yannick Roman, Bachelor of Arts Biological Sciences. David Merrick Rosen, Bachelor of Arts Financial Economics, Cum Laude. Caitlin C. Russell, Bachelor of Arts Sustainable Development. Burton Jacob Sachs, Bachelor of Arts Statistics. Sak Yu, Bachelor of Arts, Double Major Economics Mathematics, Cum Laude. Matilda Ramat, Bachelor of Arts Political Science, Business Concentration, Magna Cum Laude. Hamza Saeed, Bachelor of Arts Economics Mathematics. Daniel Salam, Bachelor of Arts Economics. Giuseppe Salvi, Bachelor of Arts Neurosciences and Behavior. Eugene Edward Sanchez, Bachelor of Arts Visual Arts. Joseph Francis Sanchez, Bachelor of Arts Political Science. Ana Maria Salagi, Bachelor of Arts Economics Philosophy, Magna Cum Laude. Lindsay Nicole Sheminsky, Bachelor of Arts Computer Science. Lucy Baker Schmidt, Bachelor of Arts, Double Major in Human Rights and Political Science, Cum Laude. Abigail Ann Schwartz, Bachelor of Arts Creative Writing, Magna Cum Laude. Ronnie Siegel, Bachelor of Arts Financial Economics, Phi Beta Kappa. Brian Brandon Suki, Bachelor of Arts Sustainable Development. Keith Edward Roberts, Bachelor of Arts Economics Philosophy. Ki Don Sio, Bachelor of Arts Psychology, Magna Cum Laude. Jeffrey James Serio, Bachelor of Arts Computer Science, Cum Laude. Lu Jing Shen, Bachelor of Arts Financial Economics, Summa Cum Laude, Phi Beta Kappa. Zita Shen, Bachelor of Arts Economics, Magna Cum Laude. Zvi Sherman, Bachelor of Arts English, Summa Cum Laude. Stephen Thomas Sherwood, Bachelor of Arts Economics. Andrea Valentina Simez, Bachelor of Arts Information Sciences, Magna Cum Laude. Rogerio Noguera Simos, Bachelor of Arts Film and Media Studies. Anastasia Soto Ochenko, Bachelor of Arts Art History, Business Concentration, Magna Cum Laude. Julia Francesca Sisto, Bachelor of Arts Psychology, Business Concentration, Magna Cum Laude. Alexander Hiroki Sato, Bachelor of Arts Computer Science. Jason Chalcom, Bachelor of Arts Political Science. Vivian Siu, Bachelor of Arts Economics. Rafael Paul Skokanich, Bachelor of Arts History, Summa Cum Laude, Phi Beta Kappa. Imri Sofer, Bachelor of Arts Computer Science. Betty Sobel, Bachelor of Arts Urban Studies, Cum Laude. Mona Son, Bachelor of Arts Film and Media Studies, Magna Cum Laude. Seong Yong Song, Bachelor of Arts Mathematics Statistics. Iberis T. Torres, Bachelor of Arts Urban Studies, Cum Laude. Michael Anthony Spiata, Bachelor of Arts Sustainable Development. Will William Thomas Streakin Jr., Bachelor of Arts Political Science. Justin Strawn, Bachelor of Arts Political Science. Wee Chul Shin, Bachelor of Arts Psychology. Jay Woon Shin, Bachelor of Arts Visual Art. Farhat Suvanov, Bachelor of Arts Financial Economics, Cum Laude. Jason Paul Swan, Bachelor of Arts Earth Sciences. Andrew James Sweet, Bachelor of Arts Psychology, Magna Cum Laude. Victoria Alejandra Tahan, Bachelor of Arts Sociology. Emily A. Unterweger, Bachelor of Arts Creative Writing, Summa Cum Laude. Departmental Honors, Phi Beta Kappa. Sang Bung Kim, Bachelor of Arts Economics Statistics. Yo Kang, Bachelor of Arts Biological Sciences. Kyung Muk Lim, Bachelor of Arts Mathematics Statistics. Michael Sosa, Bachelor of Arts, Double Major, Psychology and Religion, Summa Cum Laude, Phi Beta Kappa. Robert Soto, Bachelor of Arts, Political Science. Rodolfo Valvivia, Bachelor of Arts, Political Science. Jacqueline Vesnik, Bachelor of Arts, Philosophy. Daniela Elisa Truglio, Bachelor of Arts, English. Junji Reginald Toh, Bachelor of Arts, Financial Economics. David John Thompson, Bachelor of Arts, Middle Eastern, South Asian and African Studies, Cum Laude. Romaine Thomas, Bachelor of Arts, Human Rights, Summa Cum Laude. Oliver Caluve, Bachelor of Arts, Computer Science. Nirajan Da Silva, Bachelor of Arts, Applied Mathematics. Caitlin Ruth Carey, Bachelor of Arts, Political Science, Summa Cum Laude, Phi Beta Kappa. Nai Jean Kim, Bachelor of Arts, Double Major Architect, Architecture and Sustainable Development. Yu Bean Kim, Bachelor of Arts, Economics with a Concentration in History. Caitlin Regina Waksberger, Bachelor of Arts, Middle Eastern, South Asian, African Studies, Departmental Honors, Phi Beta Kappa. Margaret Andrus Brill Voorhees, Bachelor of Arts, Political Science, Summa Cum Laude. Emmanuel Marcus von Russell, Bachelor of Arts, Human Rights. Nina Anacona uh, Mensi Theodore, Bachelor of Arts, African American Studies, Departmental Honors, Magna Cum Laude. 
Hao Ying Wang, Bachelor of Arts Psychology, Ying Zhang, Bachelor of Arts Physics with Departmental Honors, Angelica Marisa Rivas Baxter, Bachelor of Arts, History and Theory of Architecture, Jane Eliza Schwartz, Bachelor of Arts, History and Theory of Architecture, Wendy Wei, Bachelor of Arts, Sociology, Gillian Catherine Fitzgerald, Bachelor of Arts, Political Science, Salah Abdullah Basir, Bachelor of Arts, History, Daniela Dos Santos Quezresma, Bachelor of Arts, Political Science with Departmental Honors, Yi Yu Wang, Bachelor of Arts, Economics, Cum Laude, Kai Yuan Wang, Bachelor of Arts, Mathematics, Statistics, Cum Laude, Ying Fong Yang, Bachelor of Arts, Psychology, Magna Cum Laude, Lisa Naomi Wahlberg, Bachelor of Arts, English, Cum Laude, Sarah Bryn Whitmer, Bachelor of Arts, Political Science, Concentration East Asian Studies, Magna Cum Laude, Jacqueline N. Well N. White, Bachelor of Arts, Sociology, Cum Laude, Giselle Elizabeth Robledo, Bachelor of Arts, Comparative Literature and Society, Cum Laude, Sheng Lin Zhu, Bachelor of Arts, Economics and Political Science, Summa Cum Laude, Hao Yan, Bachelor of Arts, Information Sciences, Concentration in Linguistics, Cum Laude. Jonathan Valdez, Bachelor of Arts, Financial Economics, Cum Laude. Tyrone Rudolph Wilkinson, Bachelor of Arts, Computer Sciences with a Concentration in Biological Sciences. Caroline Elizabeth Wheeler, Bachelor of Arts, Mathematics with a Concentration in Philosophy. James Michael Ward, Bachelor of Arts, Economics, Political Science. Seth S. Vaughn, Bachelor of Arts, History and Theory of Architecture. Asher James Slotnick, Bachelor of Arts, Political Science, Magna Cum Laude. Xionghui Zhen, Bachelor of Arts, Financial Economics, Summa Cum Laude, Phi Beta Kappa. Don Marie Wells, Bachelor of Arts, Sustainable Development. Ori Elias Wiener Blotner, Bachelor of Arts, Psychology, Magna Cum Laude. Blair Vale, Bachelor of Arts, Neuroscience and Behavior, Summa Cum Laude, Phi Beta Kappa, Departmental Honors. Allison Claire Yamamoto, Bachelor of Arts, Political Science, Business Concentration, Cum Laude. Nathan Weber, Bachelor of Arts, Physics. Paul Teitelbaum, Bachelor of Arts, History, Summa Cum Laude, Phi Beta Kappa. Jacob Alexander Brownstein, Bachelor of Arts, Economics, Concentration in Mathematics, Summa Cum Laude, Departmental Honors, Phi Beta Kappa. Elif Nas Choker, Bachelor of Arts, Psychology, Concentration in Sociology, Summa Cum Laude, Phi Beta Kappa. Travis Ray Williamson, Bachelor of Arts, Political Science, Magna Cum Laude. Samuel Ellison Whitsley, Bachelor of Arts, Urban Studies, Summa Cum Laude, Departmental Honors, Phi Beta Kappa. Hyo Jung Sophia Wu, Bachelor of Arts, Philosophy. Philippe Martin Vieter, Bachelor of Arts, Computer Science. Adam G. Wanjun, Bachelor of Arts, Psychology. Benjamin Matthew Thompson, Bachelor of Arts, French and Fac Francophone Studies, Cum Laude. Alina Karasova, Bachelor of Arts, Sustainable Development. Zahir Wahid, Bachelor of Arts, Political Science. Winston Togi Wei, Bachelor of Arts, Double Major History in Political Science, Summa Cum Laude, Phi Beta Kappa, Departmental Honors. Yuria Takukishi, Bachelor of Arts, Political Science, Concentration East Asian Studies, Magna Cum Laude. Khalid Ishmael, Bachelor of Arts, Com Comparative Literature and Society. Daniela Amarim Konkalves, Bachelor of Arts, Human Rights, Concentration, Middle Eastern, South Asia and African Studies, Cum Laude. Eden Becher, Bachelor of Arts, Creative Writing. Laura Kristen Walker, Bachelor of Arts, Psychology, Business Concentration, Magna Cum Laude. Vincent Tam, Bachelor of Arts, Biological Sciences, East Asian Studies Concentration. Maria Marquina, Bachelor of Arts, Political Science, Summa Cum Laude, Phi Beta Kappa. Phew. All right, so Will, the very, very amazingly awesome class of 2017, please rise. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I am proud to present to you the unique, gifted, scrappy, savvy, and always inspiring class of 2017, 70th anniversary class.
Please be seated. Our valedictorian this year is Colin Burgess Valentini. Colin is a native of New Jersey, which we won't hold against him. <laughs> and the son of Columbia professor of chemistry and dean of Columbia College, James Valentini. Colin is a proud veteran of the United States Marine Corps. where he attained the rank of corporal. He served in combat in Afghanistan as a vehicle commander for a mobile assault platoon. We would have to go back to the time of the post-World War II GI Bill to identify another occasion on which a military veteran was valedictorian. Collins' achievement is indicative of the extraordinary talent and accomplishments of the 102 United States veterans graduating this week. <laughs> Colin will describe to you himself his path to the military and then to GS where he has achieved the highest level of academic excellence in the Department of Mathematics. In addition to his extraordinary academic performance, Colin worked at the Columbia Daily Spectator as a cartoonist and data analyst, where he focused on modeling social and media data. Colin Valentini has been named to the Dean's List every semester during his four years at Columbia. He graduates with far better than an A average, a degree in applied mathematics, summa cum laude, phi beta kappa, and as a member of the GS Honor Society. Next year, Colin will be joining that other GS downtown. Goldman Sachs. <laughs> where, he, where he will be working in their credit risk analytics group. Please join me in welcoming the valedictorian of the 70th anniversary class of 2017, Colin Burgess Valentini. Pres Excuse me. President Bollinger, Provost Coatsworth, Executive Vice President Madigan, Provost Vol, Vice President Ip, Dean On, fellow graduates, families, and friends. It is truly an honor to be standing here among so many gifted men and women from such diverse backgrounds. It's your support, inspiration, and motivation that helped me succeed and stand before you today. You should be exceptionally proud of your achievement, especially given that some of you have done so while also being parents, volunteers, full or part-time employees, and even military reservists. For many of us, this day has been a long time coming. For me, this is a moment that for most of my life, I was certain would never happen. When I was 18 years old, I had little understanding of who I was, what motivated me, or what I wanted to do with my life. But the one thing I knew was that I needed more time to figure it out. Growing up, I was crazy about cars, so after high school, I decided to go to vocational school to become a mechanic. 
While I was there, a friend of mine told me he was joining the Marine Corps. The Marine Corps, I thought? What the hell is that? Out of curiosity, I requested more information online, and a day later, a recruiter called me. And like so many before him, he was a master of persuasion and embellishment, but not, as it turned out, a liar. Even though I left the recruiting station feeling like the next Achilles. I was drawn to the adventures I would inevitably have, the brotherhood I would soon be a part of, and the real contribution I would make to this country. I decided to enlist. But before heading to boot camp, I had to take a series of tests to determine which occupational specialties I qualified for, and found out that I qualified for all of them. But after speaking with a Marine veteran in my hometown, his advice was, do the infantry or don't do it at all. It didn't take long for me to realize that I was, in fact, not Achilles. There was no romance about my deployment to Afghanistan. But perhaps I learned even more important lessons about what it means to be part of a team and care for the Marine next to you more than you care about yourself. These lessons stayed with me even as I transitioned out of the military. Once out of the Marine Corps, however, I was faced with the same question. What should I do next? In the Marine Corps, I had learned to seek out excellence and set challenging goals for myself. I also realized that no serious advancement was possible without a college degree. So I took a deep breath and applied to Columbia. Obviously, being out of an academic setting for over five years does little to prepare you for an Ivy League education. I learned as much as any other service member about discipline, teamwork, and perseverance, but had forgotten equally as much about high school algebra, geometry, and trigonometry. I was forced to start out at the very bottom of the totem pole, pre-calculus. A course so elementary for most traditional Columbia undergrads that it necessitates a friendly disclaimer. Columbia College students do not receive any credit for this course and must see their advising dean. <laughs> the class was taught by a phenomenally gifted young PhD student named Andre Nagut, who now teaches at MIT. I'm sure many of you remember him because our class was almost entirely GS students. In order to cover nearly four years of high school math in 12 weeks, we moved at a pace just short of breakneck. In the beginning, I felt totally lost and couldn't decipher the pages of online lecture notes for each class. But his course felt different from the other classes I was taking. Even today, as I look back to the notes that Andre had written, I'm inescapably intrigued by the depth of the course. While some instructors might have used the rudimentary subject matter as an excuse to plod through the basics of high school math, Andre was determined that the class be as challenging as any other college class you would take. I didn't know it at the time, but that course would prove to be the most important and influential class I would take here. It introduced me to math at a higher level, and at some point during the semester, it scratched the part of my brain which is not content with knowing only that something is true. I felt inspired, or perhaps more accurately, compelled to investigate why these things are true. Mathematics quickly became the most profound field of learning I had ever encountered. I realized that I loved its search for objective truth. I loved how it could definitively prove concepts so counterintuitive that you would be left with no other choice 
but to reevaluate how you viewed the entire world around you. I loved that it was the language of science and that learning to interpret equations and not just solve them was the first step to understanding how the world behaves. But perhaps most of all, I loved that even though I'm most certainly not a brilliant person, I could do well in mathematics simply by seeking to answer the question in my mind that seemed to be ceaselessly recurring. Why? That pre-calculus course was the most influential course I took because it revealed to me the specific search for truth that actually gave meaning to my world. Every choice I've made over the past 20 years had led me to that semester. What I learned in that class went far beyond the scope of the material covered in lectures. I realized that to answer the question, who am I, I had to ask the question, what do I want to know? Each of us here, one way or another, has likely found the answer to that question during our time at Columbia. And if you haven't, you're probably further along in that search than before you came here. For me, I found that mathematics provided the means to search for fundamental truths that made a difference in my life. For you, it may be art, or English, or biology, or theater. It could be a centuries-old academic discipline, or it could be the product of the last few years. It took me a long time and through a very unconventional path before I stumbled upon what made me curious, but it has been a guiding light ever since. So even though now, after what has become almost precisely a nine-year personal evolution, I again find myself a bit apprehensive and unsure about which path is right. I'm reassured, however, that so long as I faithfully follow my curiosity, the rest will fall into place. You will undoubtedly face further challenges wherever you may find yourselves. But having worked alongside many of you, I know that you are all capable of achieving a tremendous amount, even in the face of seemingly insurmountable obstacles. Today, you've proved that. Today, you are Columbia graduates. Congratulations. Congratulations to the graduates, your families, loved ones, and friends. You embody in a spectacular way the mission and vision of GS and Columbia. I hope you will stay involved with your Columbia family for many years to come. I invite you all to continue the celebration at the class day reception to be held under the tents on Avery Plaza. As you exit, there will be student marshals ready to guide you through the maze to the reception. Since we are all headed to the same place, I ask that our guests remain seated and allow the president's party to exit first. Then our graduates will exit, followed by families and friends. Thank you. Will the candidates please stand? Yeah.